Hi, you're on Rescue TV. I'm delighted to bring you Dr. Libby again, the author of Women's Wellness Wisdom, What Every Woman Needs to Know, and also What Am I Supposed to Eat? Dr. Libby, talk to us about adrenal fatigue and the very prevalent um, problem that Australian women are facing with um, iron deficiency. Such great topics, Baha, thank you. So with adrenal fatigue, it's become so common. And Unbelievable, right? It is. People wake up and they feel like they've been hit by a bus. So scientifically, what's got, biochemically, what's going on inside of us when that happens is you're in the third stage of the stress, res stress response. Adrenaline goes high in the first stage, that's <gasps> fight or flight. The second stage is cortisol going high, which makes our clothes get tighter. It slows our metabolism down. And then the third stage is when the cortisol goes low. And that's what actually leads to the dreadful fatigue, the deep uh, the deep-seated fatigue. So recovering from that means looking at where the stress is in our lives. There's nutritional things, there's herbal support, there's, there are so many different mechanisms that can help someone recover from that. You, you talked about the three stages and I'm curious how do you uh, how long are these stages? Because it sounds like it's kind of like the boiling water method. By the time you're in stage three, you may have missed the signs of stage one, stage two, and then you're really deep into the boiling water. Very much so. So there's no, no one follows the same pattern. Some people stay in that alarm phase, the high adrenaline. So tell me about some of the symptoms that we should be on the lookout for. So blood pressure changes. Blood pressure can go high, it can go low. Or low. Digestive system problems, so IBS type symptoms, particularly for women, and the fuel Source that your body wants to use changes. We use glucose or fat, but when you're in the alarm phase, you use predominantly glucose, i.e. sugar, then you crave sugar to top up those sugar stores. So you start to notice changes with the way your clothes fit you. Okay, so say that you've now started to see that your energy levels have plummeted. Uh, we were talking about iron deficiency being one of the most prevalent problems for mm. Australian women. Yeah. Um, that's uh, th is that linked to adrenal fatigue? Or? It, it can be, and it's certainly linked to energy. It's the most common nutritional deficiency in the world, so around 30% of Australian women of menstruation 30%. age. Yeah, it's enormous. No one talks about it anymore. It's devastating to me. So, and iron is responsible for the transportation of oxygen throughout your blood, which is essential for the function of every aspect of our well-being, our sleep quality, but particularly for energy. How much iron do we need? So, a menstruating female needs 18 milligrams of iron per day, but to get that through her diet, she needs just over half a kilo of red meat. But then you've got <laughs> or six cups of lentils if wow. meat's not your if you don't eat meat. So who's going to eat that? No, I don't know anyone who eats that. The World, world Cancer Research Fund, the most evidence-based cancer research group in the world, says don't eat more than 500 grams of red meat a week to a prevent. Week. Yeah, per week to yeah. prevent colorectal cancer. So here is an, an enormous nutrition conundrum. Where are we getting our iron from? And the short answer is too many women aren't getting enough. But a simple test from your GP can tell you whether uh, whether you're iron deficient or not. And the boys need to look at this as well. It can be a big deal for men as well. So what are the symptoms of iron deficiency? I think the most common is that you know, you're know you feeling a bit lethargic mm. or you get bruising. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are some of the other kind of more sinister uh, signs of iron you deficiency? Get very, you get really irritable. So you, your tolerance levels are lower when you're severe deficient you'll crave ice so you want the ice to open up the blood vessels so that the blood flow can improve uh, you might uh, often people become constipated so bowel habits uh, can change skin becomes uh, dry hair becomes brittle uh, the thyroid function can start to suffer so that then impacts every body system again the flow on effect of iron deficiency is major if a woman is pregnant and she's iron deficient sadly it affects the IQ of that child that is never recovered so it matters very much for, for all menstruating, women of all ages, but, but particularly women during the menstruation years and during pregnancy. So as a health professional, how do you address iron deficiency? Is it enough to take a supplement or what? How do you find out you have it? How do you address it? Yeah, so a test with the GP is essential because you can store too much iron. So is that a blood test? Blood test, very simple, straightforward. Great to do that once a year, just as a general check. Okay. If you're deficient, it's in my experience, it's very difficult to get your levels up without supplementation. But I always start with the diet first. We can't eat a lousy diet and then just ask the supplements to do the work. So okay. make sure that we're getting uh, good food sources of iron. So if you eat red meat, it is a good food source. The offal meats, so liver, uh, eggs can contain iron, dates contain iron, and then your green leafy vegetables have very small amounts. Lentils, uh, as I said, six cups a day will give you 18 milligrams. So 
we've got to be practical, so but making sure you're getting iron spread across the day and then a supplement on top of that. Let me ask you, do children need iron supplementation as well? Quite often they do because iron is responsible along with zinc for the taste and texture of food. So when children are iron deficient, they're very fussy. Uh, they usually have a poor appetite or they just graze. They don't really want to sit down and eat meals. So that's becoming more and more common. And sadly, the foods that are rich in iron are the ones they don't want to eat. So it, again, supplementation is sometimes necessary for little ones, but you never supplement unless you know that they're deficient. And finally, I'd like to ask you, is there anything that leaches iron from your system or is this really just a lack of nutrition that's the problem? No, great question. The why, I call myself the why girl of nutrition, so I always want to know why. So is it a lack of dietary intake? Is it poor absorption? Calcium and iron compete for absorption. Calcium's bigger in its structure, it's always going to win. Are you, uh, are you celiac and you don't know? It's not being diagnosed. You might be losing a small amount of blood from your bowel. Is it heavy menstrual blood loss? Uh, so it's working out why someone is iron deficient is so important because that mechanism needs to be corrected. Yes. So to, to determine that, obviously the answer for, for each person is different, but knowing why is really important. Thank you so much. I think that's just incredible advice and just such a simple way to address energy issues and of course long-lasting health benefits as well. I hope be. it makes a difference. Thank you. Yeah, Baha. I'm sure it will. Thank you.